His name is excellent. Amen, amen. Let's thank God for this choir this morning. That is blessing us in song. At this time, we're asked that you would prepare your hearts as we shall bring our tithe and our offering back into the storehouse as our trustees are coming. As God has prospered you, as God has blessed you,
that's the kind of song you can hear some more of. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. This choir has been blessing us this morning. They haven't been performing, they've been ministering. There's a big difference between the entertainers and the anointed. And this choir is anointed to do what they're doing. The 102nd Psalm this morning, as we are closing out this time of celebration, and this was our theme. for this anniversary and conference. I feel like the preacher on Friday night that said, if they're gonna give you a theme, you might as well say something about it, so. And since I came up with the theme, I guess I better say something about it. <laughs> just one verse, 102nd Psalm, just one verse, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Can I read that one more again? You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Before we pray, I want to speak to you from this thought set up for a set time. Set up for a set time. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us now. Grant us everything that we need to deliver this word today. Bring everything back to my remembrance speak to the hearts and the minds of your people stir a heart in this place today my god lift somebody today encourage somebody today through your word in advance we say thank you in jesus name amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord for a set time a set time we're continuing this this morning um, we're continuing with this celebration of uh, 79 ninth year of ministry and for Lincolnia Tabernacle Christian Center and it is amazing to me how God has kept this ministry for these many years uh, we aren't in some large metropolitan city but yet God has caused many to find this place of worship and this place of refuge and where many souls have been saved and bodies have been healed and deliverance has taken place. It is amazing to me how, how, how God moves in our lives. I, I, I'm, I've always been just mesmerized by how God moves in our individual lives. Many of us will testify that we are, we are amazed at how we see the hand of God move through the affairs of our lives. It's something, if you, if you have never been privy to the providence of God or how God moves, you might go through life under the assumption that things just happen. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's, it's something be, because as I look at this, uh, I, I, I recognize that things just don't just happen. You, you may go through life believing that life is just about chance. Well, the reality is nothing just happens. Everything that happens, uh, that happens has a divine purpose tied to it. And the hand of God is always involved in the affairs of our lives. And much of what we experience, we attribute to demonic assault oftentimes. Anything bad, we say, oh, the devil. Oh, that no good, rotten scoundrel. 
the devil. The, the, the bad things, we, we, uh, we attribute it to some, de some demonic attack. We, we think that, that the devil is attacking us when things go wrong. And in some instances, this is true. But remember that Satan doesn't have a direct path to us. And whatever the devil brings into our lives, God must allow it. Uh, my mind just quickly goes to, to the book of Job, or for those of you that are not sure, Job, if you please. But, but the book of Job, uh, Satan couldn't touch Job unless God gave a permission. Amen, somebody. As a matter of fact, this suggests that the reason we are still alive hmm, and the reason we are still here as survivors is because God still has his hand on us through it all. Look at somebody and say, I am a survivor. Uh, they don't have to know what you survived, but just, just tell them again, I, I am a survivor. Uh, they, they don't know all that you've been through. They don't know all that you had to come through. Tell them again, I am a survivor. Uh, if, if the enemy had had his way, we'd be in our grave right now. But, uh, but God who's rich in, uh, let me calm down here, but God who's rich in mercy. I am a survivor when i look at this this suggests that the reason that we are still alive is because god has had his hand on us if we have nothing else to thank god for we ought to thank god for protecting us uh, that that's one we ought to thank god for providing for us. we ought to thank god for giving us peace while we were going through whatever came into our lives it's amazing that a psalm like this is a psalm that we can all identify with uh, this is a psalm where that David pours out his heart to before God. This is a psalm where, uh, where that the, the psalmist literally declares before the Lord that he is overwhelmed by his circumstance. And he has become disillusioned by his experience. Anybody ever been overwhelmed? Yeah, just, just not sure uh, what to do. How, how, how am I going to get through this? And as a result, David is still at a point that he really needed a breakthrough from, from God. Sometimes you need more than just a break. <laughs> I'll say that slower for the hearing impaired. Sometimes you need more than just a break. Because a break might mean just leaving the walking down the street. But, but when you come back, you still got to deal with what you left at the house. But oh, when you get a breakthrough. A breakthrough means when I get back home, that thing is gone. <laughs> a breakthrough means when I go back to the doctor, what the doctor saw last visit, he didn't see this visit. Tell somebody to say, I need a breakthrough. That's what I need. Yeah, I, I just need a breakthrough. So, so when you look at this, it's something. Sometimes you need more than just a break or a getaway. You, you, you need a breakthrough. Uh, it, it was a breakthrough whereas God told Moses, these enemies you will see no more. So when you look at this, it appears to me, it appears to me that, that David must have come to a point and realized that God moves in his own time. If I'm not telling you anything new, I, let me say this. God moves in his own time. Listen, God, God moves in seasons and he moves in shifts. I don't know who this is for today, but, but, but whoever you are, you, you, you need to realize that your waiting is not in vain. Hmm. And don't let anybody rush you through this process. Because there's some things that God is doing with you in the process. There's some things that God is trying to do with you and through you. So don't rush the process. As a matter of fact, I found in the scripture that waiting has its benefits. The Bible says, I waited patiently upon the Lord and he heard me and delivered me out of all of my fears. One writer said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles you listen your waiting is not in vain your circumstances are aligned with your breakthrough everything that has happened the good the bad the sweet and the sour all a part of a divine setup in order for god's set time to manifest in your life listen the the very thing you are believing god for know that god has preordained it for you the circumstances that have transpired have prepared you for that certain time and a certain place 
Just know this. You have been set up for a set time. Oh my God, I hear it now. What you have believed God for is going to happen. Uh, just take a moment, testify, tell somebody it is going to happen. Tell them I don't care what's going on, it is going to happen. So listen, you might as well praise God like you already have it. <laughs> the enemy is expecting you just to fall down and play dead, but I, I'm not going to fall down and play dead. I played dead too many years. I'm going to give God glory in spite of what I've been through. He deserves the glory because he did wake me up this morning. He did start me on my way. The blood is running warm in my veins. I do have the activity of my lips. You want to tell somebody? I'm just going to praise him. That's all. Just going to praise him. Well, <laughs> well, listen, listen. The very thing you are believing God for, know that God has preordained it. And the circumstances that have transpired have prepared you for that certain time and that certain place. Just, just know this. You have been set up for a set time, and what you have believed God is going to happen, you've been set up for a set time, and the enemy of your soul cannot change the set time. I got to say it again. He cannot change the set time or place. Therefore, it will be imperative that you not become so frustrated. Hmm. To the point that you lose the ability to focus. Because you can become frustrated to the point the way you cannot focus anymore. Oh, bless. And when you get so, so, so dis distracted and lose focus, you want out of this as quick as I can and you'll do anything to get past it. Am I having good church yet? Well, as I look at this, it's something because the, the psalmist here. He is now expressing his sorrow, his grief, and he pours himself out saying to a God that, God, I'm overwhelmed. Hmm. Sometimes we don't want to admit it, but the weight of life or the responsibilities of life can cause us to become overwhelmed. We, we feel like no support feel like there's no help in sight and, and just when giving up comes into the picture you start to think about there is a set time come on tell somebody say there is a set time well in this hundred and second chapter of psalms the, the psalmist is speaking about having circumstances that can delay your destiny and what the psalmist is saying is it's it is all about focus every mistake you have made in life has been because of deadly distractions uh oh let me say it slower every every mistake we've made in life has come a res has come as a result of deadly distractions it was because we have allowed the enemy to shift us away from god and shift us away from what god has promised us and now we find ourselves focusing more on our problem than on the set time well as through this psalm the psalmist goes in uh, out of frustration. He goes in and out of frustration. He even experiences isolation. He also goes through what I call hateration. Is that, is that a word? I got some scooches. Is, is that a word? <laughs> well, it is now. It is now. He went through, y'all know what hateration is. Uh, everybody has haters. Everybody got folk who, 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 just, who just can't talk about nobody else but you. David goes through isolation. He goes through hateration. Then he starts to lose concentration. He then moves into a position of desperation. But then in the 12th verse, he starts to understand that God will be his salvation. He decides to take his problem to God. Tell somebody and say, take it to God. Come on, touch them and say, take it to God. Whatever you've been dealing with, just go ahead and take it to God. You've been trying to do this thing yourself, and you're doing nothing but losing sleep and, and eating more than you ought to eat. Your hair is falling out, your blood pressure is up, and you've got stuff you never had before. Just slow this thing down and take it to God. Give God a praise right there. It's interesting here, though, because when I look at this, it's something 
Because at some point in your struggle and in your circumstance, you make up your mind, I'm going to take this situation to God. And when you realize you're coming out at a set time, then you realize it's not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit. Well, if you don't deal with your weariness, you'll become withered. And withered means that you start to fall apart. That's thing you need now is to fall apart. You're too close to the breakthrough. You're too close to the set time. You're too close to what God promised you. You're too close to what God said to you. There's some prayers on the line. Don't give up on your family because there's an anointing over your family. Don't give up on your child because there's an anointing over your child. There's a set time. Give the Lord a praise right there. When you understand that God has a set time, then, then you can say like Paul said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. By the time the psalmist gets to verse 12, he realized that there was no need for him to worry or lose hope. He remembered God never changes. God, I feel like preaching here. And just because your circumstance change doesn't mean that God will change. The songwriter said, build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Listen, what must be understood is people will come in and out of your life. Oh, but you have to realize that God is the one constant that you have in your life. As a matter of fact, God said it himself. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will never allow his children to be in a crisis and not respond. There's no way that God can hear your cry and not respond you don't have all the cute formal prayers you can't pray cute when you're going through hell and high water ain't time to give all his names ain't got time to call great Jehovah sovereign God when you're in trouble there's only one word help help God help my God anybody ever been in trouble and the only words you can think of help God don't know how I'm going to get out of it don't know how long I'm going to go through it but help me God I don't know why I'm dealing with this somebody throw your big head back and say help Lord have mercy I don't have time for no cute prayers. Oh, thou great Jehovah. Grace and mercy be unto you. When you're hurting. <laughs> when you're going through something. All you got in your arsenal is help oh bless his name there's something that AAA has used to have a, a window visor that they would give you when you join up and when you break down on the other side of the visor it just says help it doesn't say my name is Kenny I'm from Durham, North Carolina I'm with the Church of Christ I'm with Fisherman. No, it just says help because when you're down and out, all I need is some help. Touch three folk and say, All I need is some help. That's all I need is some help. Hallelujah. God's faithfulness is not hinged on your faithfulness. If God's faithfulness was hinged on your faithfulness, we would always be in a rut. But don't pray like we are. We don't pray like we ought to. We don't come to church like we ought to. We don't give like we should. I'm so glad God doesn't let our unfaithfulness define who he is. God is going to be faithful until we learn how to be faithful back. 
Well, according to the 13th verse, the psalmist believes there is nowhere to look but up. I like that. There's no other place. I can't, I can't go to Mama Nim. Can't go to Junebug. Ray Ray. Shaquan. Chiquita. Vaseline. Valvoline. When you're in trouble, there's, there's no place to look but up. He has no place to go but up. He said, for the time to favor her. Yes, he says, the set time. Look at somebody say, it's time, it's time, it's time, yeah. For all the crying you've done, it's time. Y'all ain't going to help me here today. For all the moaning you've done, it's time. For all your sleepless nights, I come to tell somebody, it's time. For the time you're laid awake praying that God will keep that son safe until he got I come to tell you it's time from all the time you spent on your face before God I come to tell you it's time slap somebody a high five and say it's time it's time that's all well I'm getting up out of here now he said for the time to favor her yeah the set time is come and there's something about favor that many don't understand favor is better than money push it here white all right it's better than money favor can get you a job that you're not even qualified for favor is like going to the store with only twenty dollars in your pocket and you pray and ask God and when it registers up it comes out to 1999 that's favor oh somebody that's favor favor from God is better than money in your pocket favor from God Tell somebody say I got favor I got favor I got favor. It ain't fair, but I got favor. <laughs> favor, favor can get you in the places where money can't get you. Favor will give you an audience before people that money can't do. Somebody shout favor. I come to tell you the set time has come. The set time has come. Everything God has done, he has done it in time. Now, God's not in time. We are in time. God did not begin with time. God began time. God existed before time. God made man at a certain time. Six days is the number of man. There is a certain time. And the Bible says when the fullness of time had come, he sent his son Jesus. Uh, he could have come at any other time in history. But there was a set time. God could have come and moved at any time during the 70 years of exile that Jeremiah spoke of in the 29th chapter. He said, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. There are plans of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Well, as I close this thing down, I declare to you there is a set time that God has put into place. God waited for the set time to send Jesus into this world. God did that from eternity. 
And when Jesus was crucified, he got up on the third day and appeared to his disciples. Uh, the Bible says in St. John, the 14th chapter, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Well, in other words, Jesus has a set time that he's coming again. Touch somebody say set time. Set time. We don't know the set time. But all we know is he's coming again. All we know is that he will return in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Listen to this. The set time is controlled by God. So, so brother pastor, what, what do I do? while waiting on a set time. This means that while we are waiting on the set time, we must live in the meantime. Tell somebody say, in the meantime. That simply says, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna have some joy that I've never had before, Lord. Waiting in the meantime, while I'm waiting on the set time, I'm going to praise him in the meantime. Y'all ain't going to help me today. Uh, while I'm waiting on God to work it out, I'm going to praise him while he's in the working stage. Is there anybody in here today that wants to give God in the meantime praise? I haven't gotten it yet. It's not mine yet. It's not in my hand yet. I'm not healed yet. But in the meantime, In the meantime, because you might as well go ahead and praise him because you're not going to move him any quicker. God's not upset because you got mad and decided not to come to church no more. I'm mad at God. So I ain't going. I'm going to stay home and isolate myself. Put on my whole raggedy house coat, my raggedy slippers. Pull down the blinds. Sit in isolation. And God says, I'll be right where you left me. Because I'm not coming into your isolation. I need you to do something in the meantime. While I'm in between jobs. I'm, I'm in between an apartment and a house. I'm in between a promotion. In the meantime, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. In the meantime, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. In the meantime, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. In the meantime, my soul shall make in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Listen, in the meantime, oh, magnify the Lord with me in the meantime you already got your victory I need you to help me get mine show me how you got it tell me about holding on tell me about holding out tell me about waiting on God tell me how you did it don't look down at me help me get this praise touch three focus say in the meantime in the meantime <laughs> the best praise you could ever give God is while you're waiting I don't want to talk to folk who just got paid I want to talk to folk that are in between checks and even when you get that one, that ain't enough. I want to talk to folk that are in between mountains. Oh, God. That know that God's going to bring you out of this. And it's just a matter of time. Can I get about 12 folk to jump up and say it's just a matter of time? That's all. Just a matter of time. 
The reason why I praise him? Because it's just a matter of time. You may think I'm crazy because I'm giving God glory and ain't got no money. But I've got favor. I've got favor. And as long as I got favor, I've got his attention. And all I need is his attention. Because when I need some money, he'll send somebody my way. Bless my soul. When I need some food, he'll send somebody my way and bless my soul. All I need is favor. Give God a praise right there. The set time has come. Ain't nothing better than to see two broke folks shouting together. <laughs> two, two broke folk. Ain't got nothing to prove. Ain't trying to shout no better than you. We both broke. Ain't none worse, ain't none better than two folk who both the cars have broke down. Dancing together, worshiping together, not trying to outdo each other, but to realize I'm going through too. Is there anybody that want to dance with this brother who's going through? Lord, y'all. Is there anybody else going through? Anybody else going through? Anybody else going through something? You ought to get somebody's hand and say, I'm going through too. So why don't we praise God together? Hey! Glory to God. I ain't got nothing to, and I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm going through just like you're going through. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yes, yes, go, go, go. See, there's some folk that's going through over here. And I know they're not the only folk going through something. All of us are going through something. You ought to find somebody who's been with their child and get together with them and dance together. Y'all ain't saying much. You ought to find somebody whose home is about to break up. Yeah. Glory. Ah. Come on, son. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ain't got no job, but God is providing right now. Hallelujah. I've got his favor. That's what I have. I have his favor. Come on, praise it with somebody else who you know is going through something. Ah, bless the name of the Lord. Set up for set time. Glory to God.
Give the Lord a praise right there. Come on, clap those hands, all ye people. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Then it says, and shout unto God, wish of triumph. You're not the only one going through. But reassure each other, we have his favor. And favor is better than money. Oh, my God. Because I can be the richest man on the planet and not have the favor of God. Everyone standing that's able to stand. If you're able to stand, stand. Set up. Set time. The preacher said on Thursday night in, in the conference, he said, look at your watch and say, would you look at the time? <laughs> the preacher Friday night said, there's an expiration date on your trouble. <laughs> and the reason why you keep that long, sad face, he said, because you haven't realized that thing has expired. You ever drink some bad milk? <laughs> I poured out chocolate milk last night. What's today's date? 27? The date said 28. I said it was too close. Because I had a bad experience with bad milk. Poured it right down the drain. Nothing worse than keep dealing with the expired stuff. You still talking about stuff from 62. We still ain't speaking. 1972, October 12th. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Got the date down pat. That thing expired a long time ago. Get somebody's hand right where you're standing. Right where you're standing.